hello and welcome to my latest video. In this video I'm going to be taking a look at the new Scorpius missile tank that Games Workshop sent me and I'm going to be showing you how to paint it as a Death Guard vehicle. Uh, now I will say that while I'm painting it um, I did mess up a little bit. I mean so I get a lot of requests for how to paint vehicles uh, using just normal brushes without an airbrush. And my intention was to paint this without an airbrush, but as I got through it, um, the processes that I used, they just were gonna take too long and I got a bit kind of irritated and thought, oh, it's, it's just not gonna be worth the amount of effort that will uh, be required to finish it to a high enough standard uh, while just using normal brushes. So I do revert to using an airbrush uh, later on. You can judge uh, with how it looks about whether you want to use the airbrush or not and I will explain uh, what you can do if you want to just carry on using the normal brush um, and get some w will be quite nice results. It's just that it just takes a bit longer whereas this is just for me a, an army painting piece. It's going you know straight to my Death Guard army so I just didn't want to spend that much time on it. Um, you can see here the model is already prime black. And this is uh, also one of the issues with trying to paint a model with a like a creamy whitish sort of look to it. Uh, black is about as far away from that as you can get, so that makes the whole process a little bit harder. You can see here I've left the uh, the top off. Uh, it just makes it a little bit easier for painting. Um, I will say as well, if you want an even easier job uh, for painting it, don't glue on the missile pods. Uh, to the turret uh, so you'll be able to paint underneath them a little bit easier. I'm going to be using an Artis Opus uh, large dry brush for this. Uh, you can use also kind of like uh, makeup brushes and things. It doesn't matter too much as long as it's just like a really large uh, brush because all of the uh, early processes are going to be stippled on. Now what I would recommend is if you're going to do this and you want to make your life a little bit easier is to not prime it black. Uh, I'm using Ultimate primer but the actual you know it doesn't matter too much which uh, primer you use you, like um like vallejo do black primer or scale 75 or, or whatever like uh, you're not going to see that much of it by the time it's finished anyway um and it's a plastic model so you know ultimately it's it's not going to make a massive amount of difference uh but i would recommend like a, a brown color to start with so if you can find like a, a primer that's brown uh you will already be further along than um, starting with black as a, a base coat. Uh, and what I'm doing is, uh, so, well, I think it's pretty obvious what I'm doing, so I'm stippling the paint on. Uh, it is quite important that you water the paint down. There's going to be a significant number of layers of paint added to this. And if you do not water the paint down, uh, so I'm using XV88 from Games Workshop uh, for this first one. It doesn't matter again exactly which sort of brownie colour you use. It's, you know, you, you could have like a darker brown or a lighter brown but remember as well so you can see there quite clearly while it's wet it looks a lot lighter and when it dries it goes very dull especially because some of the primer shows through uh, but if you do not water the paint down so around about 50 50 water to paint depending on your particular paint pot uh, because you know they could you know, each paint pot is an individual and some some of the water might have evaporated or you know you might have had it a long time and it's got extra thick or something like that but roughly 50 50. If you don't water it down with all the layers that you're going to be adding to it, you'll get a very heavily textured, sort of gritty finish to the surface. It'll sort of hide some of the detail. Uh, so you can see there that I've done two coats with the 50-50 uh, mix of XV88. Uh, and now, you know, we've, we've lightened the colour. Now I've just put the colour straight on top of the previous one on the wet palette. Um, that will change the look of it a little bit like it, it makes it a little bit darker than straight from the pot however it doesn't like none of these colors matter exactly it's just going from like a brownie color through sort of like getting lighter through some bony colors up to white at the end uh, so as long as you have like colors that look similar they will all work uh, you know so don't worry if you don't have the exact same color uh, because you'll get you know, almost an identical finish as long as you end up with some, you know, you start with brown and you go through and end up with kind of white at the end. Uh, and the reason, like, so start with just using the brown. So, so like I said, I started with XV88 and I just covered the whole tank. And it is kind of important when you're doing this to try and get it into all the recesses. Now you don't have to, like, you can see some areas where like, 
you know the track coverings going onto the hull section it's a little bit darker in those and a few other recess parts so that will work really nicely because by the end of the process you'll have a very high contrast tank so it'll look extra grimy and dirty in all the recesses which is perfect for death guard and then it'll be much cleaner and smoother on the race surfaces um but do try and make an effort to get the brush in there now it's a big brush and you might struggle a little bit with the um you know getting the paint into these recesses but you know don't be afraid to just kind of like jam it in there wiggle it around a little bit uh, also you can get smaller dry brushes as well uh, those can also help uh, i just wanted to stick with a larger dry brush just because it's quicker and you know i didn't want to mess about uh, swapping brushes and things because it once you clean them off you put this into some water uh, and rinse it off then the brush becomes very very wet uh, then the stippling process becomes a, a little bit trickier because the, the larger brush takes longer to dry and it'll just look like sort of really wet paint when you apply it so i'm doing all these processes without cleaning off the brush in between or if i do uh, clean off the brush it, there's been like a, a pause in the video while i've been doing something else um, so the brush is never very very wet uh, you do want it slightly damp to start with uh, but Know, don't just soak it in the, the water for cleaning off the brush because it will, as I said, make a large water deposit even if you rub it over some kitchen roll to get the excess water out. Uh, so now we're up to uh, more gas bone. Uh, and again, don't worry too much if you haven't got the exact colour. Uh, if you wanted, you could just start on the, uh, the brown colours and add white to them each time. And again, you'll get a very, very similar result. Uh, the only thing different here or as I'm applying the paint now is uh, you can see my being a little bit slower as I'm doing it and I'm picking out more just the raised areas so I'm not worried about getting into the recesses uh, but also if you look near the top of the side panel you can see I'm not putting quite as much effort into covering it so it creates kind of like a fade it's a textured fade going from dark at the top to light at the bottom so this is called modulation and it just means you're putting light next to dark with a transition going across the surface um, and it just means that when you finish the tank, it'll have like really nice uh, contrast because parts will stand out really well um, because they're always, you know, you have a section that's light next to dark, so it gives it nice definition and things. Uh, it will have like, a good presence on the tabletop and, you know, it'll stand out more than something that's just been airbrushed with a flat color. Uh, so the uh, final stage highlight here is uh, P3 Mora White and yet again don't worry if you don't have P3 Mora White um, but just any white paint like model paint don't just go using house paint or something like that uh, but even then you might be able to get away with it just be aware the different sort of paints have different um, kind of like sizes of particle paint particles uh, pigment particles things like that uh, so if you do use something that's really cheap then you're probably going to get a, a very heavily textured finish on it or it might not have good opacity so it'd be very translucent uh, so you know once you've done all that and again when you're applying the white it was the same process again so uh, for each successive highlight you're covering less area each time so you can see more of the other colors uh, in the background uh, now at this stage uh, you've probably seen this on some of my other videos where i'm using dark earth flesh and i'm going to be you know, using this to sort of like tie the colors together it sort of um, you know makes the highs not quite as bright the white's not quite as bright and the dark's not quite as dark uh, gives it a nice sort of weathered effect you know everything has like an equal amount of uh, sort of color to it um, and you know the problem I mean it looks all right actually <laughs> for the you know for what I'm doing this but because of the process that I use directly after this it's not really worth doing this at this stage uh, so if you wanted to do this later on I will uh, I would advise that and I'll mention this again uh, when we get to one of those stages uh, because the other thing with this is this is going to be a little bit more expensive because obviously a tank doing this process with all the contrast and the contrast medium uh, you know it's, it's a lot of paint that you're going to go through uh, just to get this effect uh, but I do I do prefer the look of the contrast and the contrast medium uh, you know, to using oils just uh, it gives a very sort of smooth um, finish it just like it, it and it's it just a bit easier to work with because you don't have to worry about the chemicals or anything 
Um, just, so for my preference, it is uh, easier. It is quick. It dries a lot quicker than oils as well. Um, that could be a good or a bad thing, but and if, so if you are doing this, I strongly recommend that you only do one side at a time. Don't try and cover the whole tank in contrast, uh, and then start cleaning it up because it you know it'll dry too quickly, and then you'll just end up with horrible coffee stains all over it. Uh, you can work with those a little bit, but it's a lot of work to tidy them all up whereas this is much more manageable you can see there i'm using a large brush this is brush is a size four uh, artist opus brush but again like any like large brush will do uh, make sure you damp it a little bit before you try and take off the excess uh, the main areas that you want to take the excess paint off are the areas where it's the white paint uh, you won't take all of the paint off uh, also any of the pooling as well so uh, contrast has a little um issue with it whereas if you apply apply a lot of it it does dry uh slightly thick so if and also like if you get it on the um like the exhaust vents and things like that and you have a large amount of uh, contrast and contrast medium in there it will fill that area and it will dry and uh, you know it won't just all evaporate whereas if you have used oil paint uh, when it evaporates it will you know all the excess evaporates um so you know just be a little bit careful you do want to uh, use the brush to take away any of the pooling and by taking away all I'm doing is very quickly just uh, dragging the brush over the excess uh, contrast washing it off in the water pot rubbing it then on a kitchen roll so uh, the excess water is removed um, and then you know just again quickly dabbing it onto the tank uh, and you can see I'm just doing vertical stri uh, strokes downwards as well so that gives like a very sort of soft streak looking effect um, but Pay attention to that. If you like that look, then you can skip all the airbrushing stuff, and what you'll just end up with is a very kind of like dark looking grubby tank. The other issue that I had with this look was that it doesn't match my other Death Guard. They're not quite as grubby as this, uh, they're a bit cleaner. Um, and you know, I even though I'm painting each thing for a video to give you different ideas, I now if I'm painting for my army, I do kind of want things to fit in a bit. So um, uh, this, so this is where I'm going to be airbrushing over some of that. And this is why I say, if you uh, want to use the contrast medium effect, wait until after you've done the airbrushing because you're now going to be airbrushing over the. Uh, you know what you've just done you probably just spent a not insignificant amount of money covering it in expensive contrast paint and then you're just airbrushing over the top of it like it still works like in all the recesses not especially near the tops and around the exhausts and things you still get that effect a little bit from the contrast medium but it is taking away a lot as well um, so you know definitely if you are going to use the airbrush um, do the airbrushing before you do the contrast stage uh, and then all I'm doing is just uh, so it's uh, around about 30 psi with a size 0 0.4 millimeter needle um, you know just doing like the bottom two-thirds just fading it in a bit more so you can see now at the bottom of the tank it's a lot lot smoother and now I'm just going on to using white as well uh, so now it's like super clean and then as it slowly goes back up into the transition at the top of the panel uh, you can see all the texture coming through a bit. Uh, so it, you get a nice contrast like that, um, you know, really smooth and clean at the bottom. It won't stay like that by the end of the video, but uh, if you do like it like that and just want to keep that, then again, you can ignore some of the weathering that happens later on. But uh, I think it is quite nice having that smooth section and then the, the textured effect uh, near it. The only thing is as well, by uh, adding the airbrush effect, it does sort of... Um, it makes it look a little bit sterile in places because you, you're taking away all the effect and it also uh, because the airbrush very easily gets into the recesses compared to the large brush uh, it will make some of the darker areas um, they look a different color because they're not as warm like you couldn't because you couldn't get as much of the the brown paint into the recesses as you're going through with all the different uh, stippling stages um, you get a different look, uh, color look so you can, I think you can see that quite clearly in the recess it looks sort of like darker you can see some, some of the black primer even where and then some of the paler color has gone over the top uh, whereas in the the more open flat areas you can see the brownie element a bit more but I mean it doesn't matter too much it's just a variation in color uh, and then 
you can see, so I worked a little bit on the front there. That's what we're going to do to the rest of the tank. Um, but also I gave the whole tank a, uh, a covering of um, burnt iron, Vallejo metal color. Uh, you might have noticed that I had some um, kitchen roll stuck under the top of the metal color pot. That's because this paint is horrible with the flip top. When you close it, it spatters paint because it's very liquid, the paint. It will explode out with, when you clip it down. Uh, so if you just put a little bit of kitchen roll in there, it stops that effect. It stops the heavy clip. Um, and then you won't get paint all over your work surface and all over your uh, models and things. Uh, so now I'm using uh, Athonian camo shade. So this is kind of like a green version of uh, Null and Oil or Agrax Earth shade. And all I'm going to do is cover all of the metal parts on the tank. So when I used the uh, burnt iron, anything that I wanted to be metal was metal. So all the tracks, like the exhaust stacks, anything, parts of the turret as well, all covered in metal. Uh, and then when that was dry, quite, quite important to leave it to dry, I used the Athonian camo shade and then all of the metal sections were covered in that. Also, uh, all of the recesses so you can see here like all the little rivets um like the uh, sections in between the doors like on the hinges all those little bits i just outlined them more quickly with the Athenian camo shade as well now you might think that uh is a bit time consuming it only took me about 20 minutes i think uh you know it's not that bad just don't be too precious about how you do it it doesn't matter if you get a little bit of paint here or there, make a stain, it just adds to the grime effect. Uh, but now we're going to be putting on the chipping to the tank. Uh, so I'm using smaller brushes here, these are size uh, 00, zero Artist Opus brushes, and I'm using Rhinox Hide. Now you want the paint to be a little bit thicker here, this is probably one and a half parts, one and a half parts water to one part paint, and you're just using uh, the tip of the brush. Now, when I'm painting these on, I do get a bit bored. So, because I'm going to be painting the whole tank like this, if you want to speed up the process, use sponge chipping. Uh, I've mentioned this on videos before. Uh, sponge chipping does give a very copy paste style effect. So, uh, make sure you rotate the sponge when you're doing it and try and focus on the edges of things uh, because, you know, that's where more damage and wearing naturally occurs. Uh, the reason I like to do it with a brush is because I have complete control over where the uh, the damage goes. Uh, it is a good idea if you want to have like the you know the control of placing exactly where the damage goes, but you don't want to spend all day putting in uh, painting on the chipping. Do sponge weathering first, and then just you know very gently in a few places that'll get the bulk of it done, and then you can go back with a brush and just pick out the areas that you think. Um, you know, could just do a bit, use a little bit more attention. The other nice thing about painting them on by hand is you can paint on scratches um, and just like tiny little dots here and there and things. Like, it's it's more like painting freehand almost when you're doing this. So it's like it's a good practice because you get uh, more brush control. But again, it does get a bit boring covering the whole tank. So you start off, you'll be painting the door because this is like the most fun area, like the nice curved edges and things. You'll be like, oh, you know, I could do this, no problem. And then you're like, oh, wait, I've got to do the top and the back. Uh, and this is taking forever. And then you just start painting bigger blobs and things. Uh, I do recommend as well that, that if you're going to stick with just painting it by hand, that spend the time on the interesting parts, like the front of the tank and the doors. And then when it comes to like the bottom like near the tread at the bottom or at the back uh, no one's going to care quite as much about those areas just be a little bit rougher with how you apply it you know use a larger brush blob it on a bit um, and also because I'm going to be putting some weathering powder over the top of it uh, especially at the bottom of the tank don't spend quite as much time you know doing these nice uh, chipped effects because you will be covering them up a lot and they'll you know sort of blend in a bit um, here so for the uh, the doorstep or you know the, the footrest thing here for getting in and out uh, of the tank uh, i you know i just left that as um you know the tank color and then i'm painting on uh, sort of a heavy amount of chipping on top of it uh it would be easier if you paint them as metal i i don't know if these would be painted metal or you know left tank as the, you know the color of the tank 
but uh, because when I airbrushed it and also with the stippling as well, it uh, it went over there and thought, well, it's at, you know it looks all right. I just keep it like that. But um, if you wanted a neater look and you don't want to spend time painting the chipping on, then again, just paint it with the you know, the tin uh, burnt iron, sorry, and then a thonium camo shade over the top and. Yeah, it's a lot quicker process and again because you'll be putting the uh, the weathering powder over the top it'll all sort of blend in nicely but at the same time i quite like the uh, the chipping on there because it does give it a more sort of naturally worn look for the you know the marines getting in and out there now this is another area where you're going to be like are you insane for doing all this by hand uh, but i'm going to highlight all the chips so i'm just using p3 mora white again you want the paint a little bit thicker uh, just because it'll um, create a nice sharp line and I'm also using a size 00 Artis Opus brush uh, you don't have to use Artis Opus brushes you know any small size brush was, will do the job you know synthetics whatever uh, it won't matter um, but it's just important to use the tip of the brush uh, make sure the paint's a little bit thicker and you're just painting the lower edge of each chip uh, if you want to do some of them uh, but not all of them so it's the same uh, concept again don't focus on the bottom of the tank in fact because you've used uh, the the same white color on the bottom of the tank the the chipping highlights won't actually show up or at least they'll be barely visible anyway so don't even bother putting uh, highlights on the bottom chips but also again they will be covered by weathering powder but anything near the top of the uh, side panel or indeed the top of the tank or anything uh, it might be worth you know spending a little bit of time picking them out because it it works really nicely it makes the chips look more three-dimensional it makes the tank just look a little bit more fancy as well uh, and more finished it is a slightly more cartoony effect uh, so if you don't want that at all and you just want your tank to look really grimy and dirty and everything um, then just do the chipping and don't bother with the highlights but you know I quite like the look of it anyway uh, and also it helps a little bit with the streaking things because you again you'll have these high contrast parts so uh, just as a quick aside here I'm going to be darkening down the tips of the exhausts uh, the uh, I'm just using uh, null and oil using a large brush again so it's a size 4 artis opus brush and just so all you do is you paint around about a third of the way up and then up to the top take the brush off uh, do like two or three coats of that uh, so here I'm um, going to be painting in the uh, the red on well first of all uh, so there's a couple of things here I'm painting in the red on the rockets from the little um, missile pod thing that's part of the tank upgrade sprue the, that's very simple I'm just using my fist and red on these uh, but I'm also going to be painting in the vision slot on the front of the tank uh, don't worry about the streaking there I will be showing you how to do that as well uh, but the, the thing about the vision slot on the tank is and I keep checking this. I'm sure I'm missing a part on models, but I've had this on all of the rhinos and everything that I've built as well. Is there is no back to the vision slot now? When you get this tank, uh, and it's, I think it's the same with the predators as well. It has this sort of like protruding front on it, whereas when you build the rhino, it has like a flat slope on it. Um, so you know you have different fronts depending on which tank you have. But all of these rhino variant models, you know, whether you use the rhino as the, the base. They all have like a hole in the front for the vision slit, but there's no detail inside the tank. You can't see the driver or anything. Uh, and I'm, I'm like, I, I'm sure I'm not gluing something in, but I keep checking the sprues because uh, it doesn't make any sense to me that it's just an empty hole there. Uh, it's a very simple fix, though. All you have to do is just clip off a bit of the sprue and glue it on the back of it. Make sure you do that while you're building it before you glue the front on, though, because it's quite hard to get it in through the hole and, you know, pull it back again. Um, but I think it looks much better and I don't really understand why it's left as a whole because all the other vehicles that I see have like lenses and things on these um, and it would be quite nasty to get bullets flying through this hole I would have thought but um, anyway uh, the colours on the uh, the vision slit are very simple so again starting with the fist and red um, just colour the whole thing maybe two clo uh, coats around about 50-50 waters of paint uh, and it will cover it quite nicely uh, then I'm using Evil Sun Scarlet for the next layer uh, and then do that around about uh, so for the Mephiston Red 
uh, you're starting around about four fifths of the way along and then paint it towards the right hand side when you get to evil sun scarlet you do it a little bit less uh, try and make sure you catch the bottom edge uh, ignore my hair getting in the way there um, so you can see that I'm just painting in a, a line at the bottom uh, but the main thing is just drag the brush always towards the right hand side and you'll get like a fairly nice uh, fade just by doing these three co uh, colors um, as long as the movements that you do are you know don't put too much paint on the brush and just like try and keep your movements nice and clean uh, it should get a fairly good fade on there uh, the only thing is because it's quite a deep recess um, so it makes it a little bit hard for me to show you exactly but um, you can just neaten up the edge where it gets close to the recess so I only use three colors I know you saw a, f um, a few more on the uh, uh, you know the wet palette but I just decided that, that was enough of a transition without making it too uh, bright and highlighted um, this is going to be how to paint the lens on the missile launcher. I also paint the headlights on the front of the tank. Uh, you may have noticed that mine are smooth. The kit does not have a smooth option. I just cut off the sort of like the cage that goes over them. Uh, the reason that I did that is because I hate painting all the little bits of light in between the metal uh, cage. Um, so it's actually easier for me to cut them off and then just paint them as big lenses. Uh, it's entirely up to you if you want to do that or not uh, it's just a preference for me because i hate painting the uh, the lights with the cages on uh, but here i'm using uh, p3 eos and green uh, if you don't have eos and green you can use warboss green uh, warpstone glow is probably a little bit closer in color but i find warpstone glow has a pretty bad coverage whereas warboss green covers better so I mean it's up to you it's not going to make a huge difference between the two if you, you could if you wanted uh, paint it war boss green and then glaze over some um, warpstone glow uh, you know to get the, the sort of like more vibrant looking green but the most important thing really is just to paint the shape on so you can see here I've got like a circular looking highlight in the top left and then the rest of the thing leaving a little uh, crescent moon um, of uh, black primer showing through uh, just in the middle and you know try and keep it quite smooth you might need to do a couple of coats uh, especially towards the edges if you find that you and also if you, you know, apply the paint correctly you can get uh, an almost neat transition between the green and the black if you find that it's not going that well though um, just take some of the EOS and green whatever green you're using add a tiny amount of black to it and then you so that would just work as a transition that you can uh, water it down a little bit so it's like a very thick glaze and just soften over the middle bit where the green touches the black and that will create a softer transition uh, so what I've done here is I've taken some uh, moot green and mixed this with the uh, well will be the green of your choice but again is eos and green here so remember moot green eos and green it's just adding a basically moot green is just uh, green with a bit more yellow and white added to it so if you took your base green, add a bit of yellow and a bit of white, you get the same sort of effect. And you're just going over the same area that uh, you've painted before, but just in a smaller area. So you can see some of the base color green showing through at the edges. This will then work as a transition as well. Uh, the trick to it is to just not have much paint on your brush. Uh, so in theory, if you painted a model uh, with good brush control, you can paint like all the highlights and you know shades and things and transitions with just one color so if you had like a black primed model and you picked you know sort of uh, one of these green colors you should be able to paint the whole model with transitions uh, with good brush control uh, just using one paint now I don't think anyone's ever bothered to do it <laughs> I might have a go the problem is it'd be very boring and you know it'd just be one color so it's not going to have a massive amount of contrast on it um, but you should be able to do something similar, like, you know, paint a whole model with that, with good brush control. Uh, so that's kind of what I'm doing here. I'm using medium <laughs> skill uh, brush control, if you like, uh, to create a rough transition. But it works because you're doing layers of paint and the it's not a hard line in between. So normally what people do when they paint different layers is they'll paint like your base color, then the next highlight layer it'd be like a straight line next to it and you'll get like visible steps in between each layered highlight uh, and then the problem then you have to go back and you glaze between them so that you get like a smooth transition but if you break up the lines so they're sort of like more stipply scratchy in between each layer 
uh, it works like it sort of like breaks up that line and it makes it look like a smooth transition even though if you look really closely it's not a smooth transition you can see all the sort of like the texture marks in there but you can still do the same thing at the end if you want like a perfectly smooth finish to your lens just water down any of the paints uh, so whichever transition that you want to glaze between then you can glaze the paint over the top and you'll get a smooth transition that way um, but that is more something for like you know golden demon standard or like display uh, piece uh, painting but uh, you know or you know if you just want to practice it getting like a smooth finish but you know you can get a perfectly good looking lens you can see here doing this is taking me well, just a few minutes just to do this uh, and because it's such a big lens and it's so visible on the model it is worth doing this just spending the bit of time uh, to make it look fancy because there's not a lot of painting on this tank that is sort of fancy painting it's mostly just using sort of simple techniques to get the whole thing done uh, whereas this is more like a like more like a display type thing but it's interesting when people will look at the tank they'll be like oh that looks cool and it kind of like just raises the level of the like how cool the tank looks overall really uh, just by having these uh, interesting little bits on it uh, so you can see here I've just been going through the stages again so remember the first one was Yoss and Green then it was Yoss and Green mixed with uh, ice yellow um, and the not sorry ice yellow it was moot green so yoss and green mixed with moot green then uh, the third paint is just moot green uh, then above that is uh, uriel yellow or flash gets yellow doesn't really matter which one um, I think it was uriel yellow, yellow I used anyway uh, but you know it'll be a yellow color and then the final highlight is not on the wet palette that you can see but that is ice yellow uh, you can also, if you want, put a white dot then over the top left. Um, I think I might be putting one in there actually. Um, and it just depends on how high you want to take the contrast. Uh, but there you go. That's you know that's pretty much it in terms of painting the lens. Uh, and also, when you're painting that, uh, you should be able to do if you've done the uh, the headlights in the same way that I have and cut off the cage that goes over them, then you can paint the you know paint the wall at the same time. Uh, and don't forget, like, you don't have to paint them as green. You can do the same technique with any colour you want. I quite often do it. Um, I like... Uh, oh, what <laughs> My favourite colour that I can't remember is uh, Sotek Green. There we go. <laughs> so it's like a blue colour. Um, you know, I quite often do uh, lenses and things like that. Cause, you know, it's just quite a kind of a nice little turquoise look to it. But I thought, because I haven't painted any of the normal green... Uh, that Death Guard put on their tanks, having the green lenses uh, works just to fill that sort of, um, you know, that lack of green on the tank. Uh, so now we're going to be painting in some very, very simple streaking. Uh, now, if you had not done the airbrush effect over the top, um, you probably still have visible streaking from when you did the Dark Oath flesh. Uh, so in that case, you probably don't need to do this stage but this is a sort of heavy glazing i'm using a size 2 brush for this this gives me the option of doing slightly thicker marks you need the paint thinned around about uh, four parts water to one part paint but this is again something that you have to check uh, i would recommend testing this on one of the less important parts of the tank before you do it on the doors because the doors are very clean and large uh, so the streaking on those needs to be a little bit nicer and you need to do vertical strokes on this. It's quite important. Uh, it's nice because vertical strokes are easy to do because you pull them towards you. However, what you will find is when you do the vertical stroke that the distance from the tank to your fingers changes as you move down the stroke. And the longer the stroke it is, the more the distance changes. And what will happen is the strokes will sort of angle to one side or the other, or they might get a little bit fatter um, like basically the pressure uh, changes and the angle changes a little bit so you, you do have to really pay attention to the uh, strokes the nice thing however with these is if you do find that it's going to the side a little bit uh, it doesn't matter just paint over it more and make the, the streaking a little bit wider because remember these are very thin like translucent streaks um, you can go over them multiple times and you'll get like some stronger lines and some uh, sort of more translucent lines uh, so you get like a nice variation of the colour uh, and that just makes it look more effective as well. Uh, in some, 
so uh, quite often people do this with uh, oil streaking uh, that's really quick and easy to do and the effect looks great but because I'm not using oils uh, it takes a little bit longer but I think you can get some very interesting looks with it because you get the variation of you know line weight um, and you can still make it look pretty cool anyway so uh, again like if you want to do oil weathering it's a very similar process but and there are uh, other videos showing you how to do that um, but they can see like I've just gone over the whole side very quickly with the streaking um, and now the final thing that I'm doing for the streaking is I'm using Rhinox Hide and just basically what it is it looks it makes it look like the chip is running down which is is what it is like so if this was rust it's darker at the top where it's more condensed and then as it runs down the tank it fades out and like and the color becomes more visible because uh, excuse my hair getting in the way again but because where the uh, the chip is darkest like, like you know if you get condensed rust it's quite dark and then you and as it runs over the lighter surface you get the color coming through and you can actually see what it is um, and then you know do that over the whole tank now that will probably take you a little while um, but again like the streaking just really adds to the sort of weathering uh, look to it so now the final thing that I'm going to do on the tank is uh, weathering powder so I'm using dark sand uh, forge world weathering powder now you can't get this anymore um, but it doesn't matter what brand of weathering powder you use like people keep asking me oh what can I use as an alternative and things I don't actually like you know I don't need other weathering powder so I haven't bothered checking that much on different colors but just go and you know you can make weathering powder yourself from chalk if you want you know different colored chalks or or whatever it's just dry pigment it doesn't need to be high quality it doesn't need to be good anything it's just dry pigment uh, and then all I've done is mixed it in with some matte uh, varnish I'm using uh, Vallejo uh, matte varnish now the trick for this is you don't want to use too much varnish it's a like I, I didn't measure the um, ratios but it needs to be still quite dry and you again stippling it on so remember like at the beginning of the video where we we're stippling the paint on it's similar to that but you can be a bit rougher uh, I, and this will just mean that it sort of sticks to the model it's not going to be perfectly stuck um, I know people always complain about fixing the pigment to the tanks but the thing is when you start using a uh, fixative the the color of the powder like you lose the intensity of it and it's a, kind of like a balance between getting the uh, the nice intensity of the dry powder with well having it you know stay on the model whereas if you uh, fix it it becomes very dull and translucent it can almost look like sort of paint that's put on the tank instead of the nice powdery effect so it's up to you so uh, you can see there that as it dries it's quite pale um, and it's stuck on pretty well there so I think you know that's my preference for how to do it if you want it so that it's perfectly stuck on there you can give it a matte varnish with the airbrush on top but it will dull it really down and it won't look like powdery anymore um, so you know it's basically up to you but you know there's the finished tank you might notice on a couple of the chips at the front I started painting in some rust inside the chips uh, then I decided that's a you know again that's gonna take me too long now it does look good because it uh, sort of doesn't make them look quite as harsh and dark they are very large chips so it's slightly unrealistic again similar you know bit cartoony ish with the size of the chips but um, again like it's a gaming piece so it really does depend on how long you want to spend on it I have done it before for Golden Demon pieces it looks really good uh, and if you wanted to do that it's just uh, you use Mornfang Brown uh, paint that on like the bottom two-thirds of the chip and then use some Charles Slayer Orange on top of that so get some rust right at the very bottom of uh, the chip it makes it look a bit more three-dimensional uh, as well but it just takes away a little bit of the super high contrast look because it, you know especially near the the very white parts of the uh, the armor panels uh, the the rhinox hide can look a bit dark next to them when they're very large chips uh, but that's pretty much it um, hopefully you have decided whether you want to go with airbrushing or stippling or a combination of the two uh, or maybe you just enjoyed watching the video but you know thank you very much for watching um, don't forget I have my uh, Patreon and my website which have more Golden Demon uh, painting standard things so uh, at the moment I'm painting an Ogroid 
and a vampire unit for golden demon um, and there's some freehand and fancy things going on there uh, and there's going to be a few more things coming up soon as well um, but you know that's the end of the video thank you very much for watching and i'll see you next time